uh, of nonprofits essentially had to cancel all of their events because of COVID. And it, you know, arose a really big problem in the fact that they're not really using technology in an effective way. And so we're helping to build tools. Okay, we are recording. This is another episode of the Automate and Grow podcast. My guest today is Nick Lynch, and he's the CEO of Kaleidoscope, which is a startup right here in Los Angeles, of all places. Nick, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so first off, like, what is Kaleidoscope? Yeah, so Kaleidoscope is really focused on enabling, uh, you know, nonprofit organizations to connect with valuable CSR, corporate social responsibility initiatives, um, influencers and in social media. And we really hope to power uh, that social media reach and, and measure the impact, uh, you know, to a nonprofit. You know, I think over 73 percent uh, of nonprofits essentially had to cancel all of their events because of COVID. And, it, you know, arose a really big problem in the fact that they're not really using technology in an effective way. And so we're helping to build tools to help them better leverage uh, things like social media to, to provide uh, valuable fundraising to their, to their efforts and initiatives. So I think you, you use the word influencer, right? So is the idea to connect influencer with, with causes or how, how does this work? Yeah, for sure. So that's, that's a big part of it um, is we found that the, um, the ability for, for nonprofits to leverage social media is still very, very early. Um, for them in, in most, like something like 97 or 98% of, of most um, nonprofits don't really leverage technology in, in an efficient way to, to you know, power their message across social media. So influencers being you know, an extremely powerful medium um, for brands right now, uh, our hope is to, to allow them to, to connect with nonprofits that align with their audience uh, and their, their belief systems and, and empower that connection um, to, to you know, allow nonprofits to, to value, you know, to create value. Um, so what, what, what does this look like? Like, is the idea that, you know, I have an audience and, you know, I, I find out about causes or that I already know about them? Like, what's the role of Kaleidoscope in that scenario? Yeah, it, it, it almost sort of functions sort of on two aspects. One is uh, kind of a two-sided marketplace and that we're connecting influencers and nonprofits and, and corporate social responsibility initiatives. And the other piece, which we're really solely focused on, um, which we believe that can really help nonprofits is the measurement piece. So, you know, we... Our sort of algorithm matches, um, you know, that component, and, and almost like Tinder for nonprofits. Um, oh, okay. And then, and then once those collaborations happen, we measure sort of the full, the full impact uh, of what those collaborations look like from the sort of very top, from a marketing perspective of, of how much awareness and traffic and funds was that collaboration that that raised, and then down to the mission impact is, is of the dollars uh, generated. What did those dollars go? Uh, of the uh, amount of people that petitioned, what did that happen? You know, how did that affect the nonprofit? So we're really focused, sort of our, our big level, our big sort of big scheme picture is that we're going to provide sort of 360 mission and marketing impact analytics to, to nonprofits. Oh, that's really interesting. It feels like there's an element also of like cameo in there where they're, yeah. you know, it's like you're connecting. I mean, I get, I guess it's, that's more fans with celebrities, but it's kind of interesting how, so if I'm, let's say I'm, you know, again, I'm an influencer, which I'm not, but at least I'm an influencer. <laughs> um, so I, I discover something that I resonate with around entrepreneurial education on your platform. Uh, what sort of tools will I have to help promote it? And how do I drive real, uh, real world results to that charity? Or yeah, that sure. Charity? So our goal is on the influencer side to make things as easy as possible to share whatever the message is. So uh, you know, once you've identified, again, sort of the, the matching system, we try to make it as simple as possible. Once you find um, um, a charity that aligns with what you want to communicate to your audience, it's really as simple as, uh, you know, be a part of this campaign. Our system will spit out a couple links that you can either share in your, your link tree or some other service that you use or, or just directly in your bio um, okay. on something like Instagram. Or you can just put it in some of the, your other, you know, video description of a YouTube um, video or, or Facebook post or those sorts of things. So we're really focused on just making it easy, integrate maybe a couple pieces of um, copy about what the charity does or what's why it's important to the influencer. Uh, and then that link. And then from there, we provide measurement for the influencer and obviously also for, for the nonprofit. So they can see, is this a collaboration that we want to continually work on? Maybe bring them more in the fold in terms of being a, a more outspoken sports spokesperson. So it really allows nonprofits also to identify you know, real ambassadors or champions of their cause to bring them maybe more in the fold again and leverage this sort of new media and a new audience to, to, to you know, leverage, you know, for, for mission um, enablement. 
So is there a revenue component to this? And then how does, how does it work for, um, I mean, your startup? Like, what do you think your role will be? Are you a nonprofit or is this something that you think, you know, there's a commerce piece? I'm just curious what the sure. model is. Yeah, no, the, uh, the the software space specifically for nonprofits is huge. It's, I think it's it's uh, estimated to be like four and a half billion in a couple of years. Oh, wow. um, and so it's a space that it, it, it's sort of, there, there's a characteristic of two types of, com of companies. You either have companies that have uh, created enterprise tools for everything but nonprofits and sort of square peg round hold it into the nonprofit. So you have these sort of master like uh, enterprise solutions that nonprofits really don't, you know, utilize all the extent because they're very specific, uh, have specific industry issues. And then you have companies that, um, you know, maybe have founders that have started at other nonprofits. And so they've sort of put technology pieces together that would have helped them at their nonprofits. But there are, you know, nuances to how each nonprofit or each uh, type of mission actually goes about using technology. So there's a challenge in, in, in you know, where the technology come from. Um, you know, for us, we really focus on the ROI aspect of it and really work collectively across the board with all these nonprofits that we're currently working with in our beta program um, to figure out where, where the real needs are and how do they measure ROI so that we can really build technology that not only can measure that and provide value to them, but also show back that you've spent X amount of dollars on software. Um, this is how actually how much you got back. And so that's really where we're positioning ourselves um, from that perspective and that we will we will be charging a licensing fee from a software perspective but um there are other components to it in terms of um you know how much money have you raised maybe we can offset some of the costs with potentially making a little bit of uh, transactional piece on that too so there's a lot of models that we're leveraging and testing currently and, and again we're we're in beta and, and one of the awesome parts about being in this stage and working with various nonprofits is really getting what works best across the board because this space is so nuanced. Um, so we're really excited to, you know, as we get into Q1 of next year to, to launch a, a full product. So it sounds like it's, it's kind of a SaaS play, but potentially transactional in the future. And it sounds like you're, you're committed to figuring out what the best model for nonprofits to dip their toe into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, how did you come about, like, you know, deciding like this was a problem that you wanted to solve? Sure. Yeah, no, I, uh, it's interesting. It's kind of a, a culmination of, of everything in my life. I, my professional career I've been uh, for the last 14 years now has been really in advertising technology and, and identifying ways that we can create tools for advertisers and brands and, and content owners and data owners to all work together and to transact and sort of live in the ad tech space. Um, my personal background though is I was actually a make a wish kid, make a wish. I was sick when I was three, I had cancer, make a wish sent me to, to Disneyland. And since the time I was three and forever, I have been part of the make a wish family and I've uh, worked really closely here um, with the make a wish office in LA. Uh, when COVID hit, it sort of put all of these things together for me is that there, there seems to be a real need for technology to serve uh, for good. Uh, in a much more broader way. I think people talk about it a lot. I think there's a lot of technology companies that obviously do good things. But for me personally, I felt like now was kind of time to put my money where my mouth is, time to put my time where my mouth was. And so I really wanted to create technology that enabled these nonprofits to really uh, adopt it in an easy way, uh, make it you know easy for them to use, and, and more importantly, leverage tools that actually work in, in today to, uh, you know, to bring nonprofits forward. Like I said before, the, you know, and I think the stats probably higher because this was back in April, but over 73% of nonprofits had to cancel all of their nonprofit, uh, their, their fundraising events. Yeah, now, I mean, you know, All I mean, these nonprofit really, events are all in person. So it's like, how do you leverage technology to, to make this better? It's definitely, you know, one of those things that's very event driven, it feels like. Yep. Um, and I think that they're already struggling with technologies that are out there. So, um, it, I, I applaud what you're doing. Like, it's really interesting to see someone taking the initiative and trying bridging that gap, especially in this time. Because I think that nonprofits are probably the most under stress of many industries right now. I mean, they're already under yeah. stress normally, right? And yeah. I want to acknowledge Make-A-Wish. Um, so it's interesting, My just a personal thing is that my cousin, when he was three, had uh, childhood leukemia. And, oh, wow. and the Make-A-Wish Foundation was wonderful to them, as was Ronald McDonald House. And, um, 
yeah. Toronto Sick Children's Hospital, which you know is probably the only charity that I support still to this day because of that. Um, so I want to acknowledge them, and I'm I'm glad that it worked out so well for you and your family because they they do wonderful work. And yeah, it's maybe, absolutely amazing. So where where you're at, it sounds like you're in beta. Um, what are the like? What's the stage of your venture as far as like? What do you need, and what do you? What's the next thing for you guys? Sure. Yeah. So we we've, we've been bootstrapping really since March. Um, we're we're about to officially raise, um, I guess what you would call our, a seed round, a small seed round to help us sort of accelerate some of the development of the of the sort of paid features that um, we're really really excited about. So today's stage is we've built a couple of products that will be. Uh, sort of our feeder products. They're free social analytics tools, um, social management tools that um, that we're already seeing actually a lot of traction and adoption on. And, and we feel like it's a, it's been a great it's been a great conversation starter. It's been a great way to uh, build initial relationships and build a bridge of trust with these nonprofits. Because again, most of them who are used to paying for software, it's overpowered, overpriced. Um, and not really in something that they they really work on or need on day to day. It's just sort of something that like solves a, a small percentage, but they're paying for the whole kit and caboodle. So um, that's sort of where we're at today. Is we're we're really using it as our as our as our sort of way to get into to, to, to nonprofits and to to onboard them. And we've gotten a lot of really great traction we're working with a lot of really great partners. Obviously, um, you know, close to near and dear to my heart of the ones that I've been to known for as well, but also new ones that. Uh, are all over the world. Um, and so we're just super excited about the, the response so far, um, the, you know, sort of the acceptance of our mission and sort of the uh, validation that what we're saying and what our perception is of, of what's needed in the market is being echoed as, yes, we need these tools, the way that you're thinking about pricing, the way that you're thinking about adoption, the way they're thinking about communication. It's all things that we crave because really there isn't somebody who understands uh, the nonprofit mission, like you do, like I, I have, since I've lived it, I know the power of it. I've worked so closely with it. So it's been, it's been really great. That's amazing. So we'll, yeah. I think we'll make sure that we connect you with anyone that we uh, know in that space or that might be able to further your mission. Yeah. Um, Appreciate there, that. Thank you. Yeah. I think that it's probably, you know, there's, there's just so many important things going on that don't have a profit component. Right. And yeah, yet, I think they're always constrained with, it boils down to the network, right? And I think sure. there's, there's an outsized, there's a very, very distinct audience, unfortunately, not a, well, it is what it is, that typically support these type of um, initiatives and charities. And if this can help even broaden that and exposure, it'd be amazing to see how that works out. Yeah, um, no, I appreciate that. Thank you. A uh, couple quick things. One yeah. is how do people get in touch with you? And if they're interested in a beta, maybe that's uh, another good thing to connect with. Yeah, so uh, we're on all the major social platforms, kaleidoscope.io. Uh, we spell it kind of funky. Um, we don't spell it like a kaleidoscope, like with a K. It's, yeah, it's, it's, a uh, it's literally the, the mix between collide and, and scope. Oh, C -O -L 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 yeah, so C-O-L-L-I-D-E, scope, C-O-P-E dot I-O. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm Nick. Um, and yeah i mean you can email me where our website is uh we're, we're actually revamping it right now it'll be up in a day and a half um but yeah you can find out how to, to sign up there as well terrific okay a couple quick things if you yep. nick are the sum of the five people that you spend the most time with as jim Rohn says yeah who do you nick spend the most time with it's a great question so uh number one is my wife <laughs> um Number two is my son. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Number three is uh, I have a buddy of mine who I've known since I was like eight. Um, and then I have another two buddies of mine um, that I met sort of later in life. Um, but I think what you're asking also, I think the value of those people, and I, maybe I can give you some insight there too. So my wife um, is extremely detail oriented. And so, you know, seeing how she looks at different things has really helped me sort of take a step back. Am I looking at it the right way? Am I asking the right questions? She's a journalist by trade. So it's been amazing to, to sort of soak up a lot of that. My son is four. He's oh, wow. adventurous. He has no fear, zero fear. Uh, and when you're in the startup world, whether you're a founder, whether you're an early employer, whether you're the hundredth employee and you don't know if you're going to grow or, or what's going to happen, fear is a component. So kind of going into things with excitement um, and sort of sort of as mitigating your fear as possible and seeing how he manages that has sort of helped me um, 
my, my third buddy, Trey, he, um, again, I've known him forever. He, he's uh, one of the most passionate creative guys ever and nobody can stop him in his mission to be uh, in music since I've known him. Right. Um, you can tell, you know, you can tell him you're, you're too old to be in music or you've been doing it for too long and you haven't seen X, Y, and Z happen. He's still doing it and he's the most passionate guy. And so seeing how he follows his passion is big. Uh, my other buddy, Ryan, is a really, really successful entrepreneur. Um, and I've known him since when it was three guys in a, in a small office to now it's a multinational, I think 400 people, he said, told me uh, on Saturday wow. they have now. Um, and so, and he's gone through an acquisition. He's now going through some other amazing things. So, I mean, again, just sort of the things that you soak up amazing, from how he yeah. looks at business has been great. And then my other buddy, Brian, uh, you know, he has been sort of in the corporate world. So, you know, he's been a consultant he's been an NBC, he's been at Apple, he's been in all these other places. And so, you know, again, kind of getting that perspective of how big multinational fully established public companies sort of look at their <laughs> operating issues and, and their challenges is sort very of, different, sort of right? it's very, very different. Yeah. It's kind of funny, but it's also cool to see how he, a lot of it is about the politics and how you position certain things with certain people within the organization. So sort of getting those aspects is really interesting too. I love it. Yeah. Um, if you were to recommend one book that people should read, what would that book be? Bob Iger's book. I, it's the, the one that just, I can't remember the name of it, but it's, um, oh my God, it is, it is about his, I, I think it's like a, it's a business book masked in like an autobiography where he just talks the way he the interweaves stories about the most well-known brands and people and things into like business lessons about how you approach certain things. It's the, it, most business books to me are really boring. I've met, I've read, I don't know, a half a dozen just in the last, you know, since COVID. But Bob <laughs> Iger's book, to me, I just couldn't put it down. It was just ex exciting, expiring, inspiring, um, and, and really amazing. Uh, I don't know if you have Masterclass, but his Masterclass was excellent. I, I would imagine so. It actually makes me want to, to, to do that just because it, of, he just I seems mean, like the coolest guy that you would want to hang out with. You know, it's interesting you said that because I, you know, he's very, um, I think it's called Ride of a Lifetime. Is that his? Yes, there you go. Ride of a Lifetime. Yeah. He, uh, his master class was excellent. Like, you, you really see a couple of things that's really interesting. I don't know if you get this from the book. One is, um, you know, he's a very measured, even guy, but he's still like insightful and he's inquisitive. So that really came across. And I think from a business perspective, what you got to see was how deals came together. Like he talked about the Steve Jobs deal with Pixar yeah. and, yeah. you know, it was um, the George Lucas Star Wars deal. Like the guy's done mega deals. Huge and, deals. Fox. Yeah. Fox, right? Like the yeah. movie studio. So it's really interesting. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that book up. And if people haven't checked out Masterclass, I always highly recommend it because you get some interesting people on there with some really, you know, kind of behind the scenes. And you get a feel for who they are, really, how they, yeah. so, which is really kind of cool. Um, all right. How are you, Nick, changing the world? Well, I, I hope that I'm, I'm bringing awareness um, and action um, to really well-deserving and well, you know, well-needed nonprofits. That's, that's how I'm hoping I'm changing the world is I'm, I'm trying to create these tools that better connect everybody to these missions um, so that they can actually fulfill what they're trying to do there. So, I mean, again, personally, just from the make wish piece, I mean, there's over 600 people that are waiting for wishes in LA, just in LA. Wow. Um, and so, and part of that's from a budget perspective, obviously part of that's from COVID and some other things, but that, that just seeing how, how difficult it is to facilitate that one mission, let alone the, you know, multi-million uh, nonprofits that are out in the world trying to fulfill the most amazing missions ever. So that's what I'm hoping to do, make some small fractional change to, to help facilitate. Yeah, maybe we can get Bob Iger on board. That'd be great. <laughs> Come on, Bob. You're Come listening, on, Bob. Bob. I'm sure you're listening. <laughs> All right, the final thing is, when we have interesting people on the Automate and Grow podcast, we'd like you to nominate other interesting people to be a future guest. It's usually someone that you know that you can introduce us to. And usually the first person that pops your mind is the best person. So who would you, Nick, like to nominate as a future guest of Automate and Grow? Yeah, I let my buddy Ryan, Ryan Disraeli, he's the CEO of Telesign. He's, uh, uh, he actually reminds me a lot of Bob Iger. He's measured um, and uh, he's got this brilliant mind. Um, and uh, yeah, I think he'd be a, a great addition to it. And, and what was Ryan's last name again? Uh, Disraeli. 
Disrael? Yeah, Disraeli. Disraeli, sorry, I kept getting yeah. here. All right, so Ryan Disraeli, you've been nominated by your friend Nick <laughs> to be a future guest on the Automate and Grow podcast. We will accept that nomination. Nick, I want to acknowledge you again for the great work that you're doing and let us know anything I can do to help you out. And Thanks. we will see you on a future episode. This has been another episode of Automate and Grow. We will see you in a future episode, hopefully with Ryan of Automate and Grow. Let's do it. <laughs>